Hey guys, it's time for another album review, this time of the new Stephen Wilson album, The Raven That Refused to Sing, and other stories. So first off, let me just start by saying, Alan Parsons and Stephen Wilson, boom. That is awesome. I've always been a fan of Alan Parsons, especially the Alan Parsons Project from the 1970s and 1980s, and um, just seeing him in the... Uh, the production credits just made me want to buy some of those albums and um, that's awesome I can't wait to get those but anyway let's talk about the album so about the album sound if you didn't think um, any of the other Opeth Porcupine Tree related albums of the early 2010 so far have been any genuine returns to that classic 1970s prog rock style then um, consider this to be that sort of sound. Um, this is probably the closest that either Mikel Lockerfell or Stephen Wilson have ever gotten into the 1970s prog rock sound, at least for these years. No doubt was this influenced by Alan Parsons, who was uh, basically a stalwart in the progressive rock scene. And um, there's a King Crimson-like drum intro of the Mellotron, it's played in all its glory. There's um, a flute in the um, song Luminol that reminds me a lot of, yeah, like Jethro Tull, especially, and also a little bit of Genesis, but especially Jethro Tull, definitely. Um, and this it has a really clear bass, and the bass sounds great. And um, the piano in that one song, the, the opening song, it is. Um, it is amazing. It reminds me of the kind of piano that Yes used on Going for the One, especially on the songs Turn of a Century or Turn of the Century and Awaken. Um, but yeah, um, the opening song is easily one of the best songs I've heard all year. This is it, it's probably the closest. And uh, yeah, this beats Riverside by a long shot. This is truly the most genuine sounding return to the classic 1970s prog rock style that I've heard in this decade so far and uh, probably of the modern era. This is the closest I've ever heard from a modern band go into the classic 1970s prog rock style period. But I'm also reminded heavily of uh, some of the more modern bands as well uh, like the next song, which is a ballad called Drive Home, it actually reminds me heavily of uh, Morning on Earth from uh, Pain of Salvation on the Perfect Element album. And um, there's also like a little nod to uh, Comfortably Numb by Pink Floyd, which is classic, of course, but well, it's like a mix of modern and classic. The uh, solo at the end of the song easily reminds me of Comfortably Numb. It's it's very heartwarming, and it's just awesome. The Holy Drinker, which is like the shortest epic on the album, there's like three songs over ten minutes, three songs under ten minutes. I think Holy Drinker is probably the heaviest song on the album. I'm easily reminded more of like something Opeth would make, actually. Um, well, it's understandable. Porcupine Tree and Opeth have contributed a lot to each other, so maybe... Stephen Wilson got that bit from Opeth. The pin drop actually reminds me of um, Jeff Buckley, believe it or not, um, with his opening song from his album Grace called The Mojo Pin. And uh, what do you know, this song is called The Pin Drop. So um, I guess maybe Stephen Wilson's reaching back to uh, some Jeff Buckley influence here. And uh, his voice actually does sound like it's going for that sort of Jeff Buckley style. So I guess that's his way of sorting of paying tribute to um, the late artist. The Watchmaker is actually one of my favorite songs on this album. I get sort of like a Dark Side of the Moon vibe on this song. Uh, I'm kind of reminded of like Us and Them, which is like one of the best songs on that album. And it doesn't exactly sound like it, but that's the kind of vibe I get from this song. And uh, well, you know, Watchmaker and uh, Time is like a big prevailing theme throughout that album, so I guess that makes sense. Musically, this song is just beautiful. The The entire, like, first half of the song, which is mostly, like, acoustic, I mean, the melodies are unlike those I've ever heard before. I mean, these are some of the most beautiful melodies that I've ever heard Stephen Wilson ever write, so that is quite awesome. 
I mean, this song is not quite my favorite on the album. The opening song, which, um, what's it called again? Luminal. Luminal is definitely the best song on the album. It's one of the best songs I've heard all year. It's absolutely fantastic. Well, these two songs, I think, are the best songs on the album, but Luminal beats it slightly, personally, for me. And the last song of the album is, of course, the title track, uh, The Raven That Refused to Sing. Um... It's like the big single of the album. The music video from it um, is really beautiful and um, it really tugs at your heartstrings quite a bit. Uh, this is probably the clearest reminder of Storm Corrosion. I thought that this album was going to go more into a Storm Kuromi sort of direction, um, but it doesn't sound exactly like it. I mean, it's not like it goes into that sort of ambient style that it did on that album. Um, the result for this album as a whole, I'm really glad that it wasn't another Storm Corrosion. I would have been very disappointed, but I mean, this song actually, um, it definitely doesn't have those kind of spooky melodies that you would hear from Storm Corrosion. Uh, the melodies are more like what I would hear from a song like Long Way Home by Super Trap, and that's why it's actually a lot more heartwarming so to speak because that's like one of the more beautiful songs that I've heard from the late 1970s prog rock scene. It's definitely one of the more heartwarming songs I've heard from that era. But yes, great song, great ending to an excellent album. I'm gonna have to give this a 9 out of 10. This right here is pretty much the forerunner for album of 2013. I know this is only February, and there's many more albums to come, but um, that's just how I feel about this album right now. Um, it's going to take a lot of effort in order to beat this masterpiece. So, yeah, definitely check this album out. I've already pre-ordered my copy, so I'm definitely not keeping the torrent that was strictly for reviewing purposes. I do not condone the downloading of torrents unless it's for purposes like this for reviewing the album. After I'm done with this review, I'm gonna delete my tour and just wait for my pre-order to arrive because Stephen Wilson is one of those men that deserves my money for whatever he does because it's like anything he touches turns to gold. He has the Midas touch of music. So definitely check this album out. Uh, again, I'm really excited for my pre-order to arrive. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching and have a good night.